Okay, I'm uh, Bob Fetrakis, and uh, it's my privilege, uh, Manny will be bringing you uh, enlightenment most of the day, and laughs, uh, but for this, uh, since I've worked with him for a while, Jim Soper, again, the man in many ways uh, responsible uh, with others for this conference, will be enlightening you. Uh, whenever I come out here, I learn more about California legislation than I know about what in the hell's going on in Ohio. So the man who always knows what's going on in the assembly in California, Jim Soper, Voting Rights Task Force. Uh, wait a minute. Didn't get the right thing. This. Uh. Dale, can you bring up the website there? Computers, come on, wake up. Take all the time you need, Yoda. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, when we started planning this in May, by the way, I am Jim Soper, uh, co chair of the Voting Rights Task Force. An organization that I joined in 2005. Uh, they helped, I, I didn't get the button this morning, but I have a button from that. They call it a teach-in, and it was the first national teach-in, and Bob was there. I don't know if Mimi was there or not. Uh, but Bev Harris was there. There were a lot of people there that are still in the movement. And we started a fight about Diebold before the Alameda County Board of Supervisors. The end result of that is they threw out Diebold and, and brought in Sequoia, which was slightly better. But they said that you're going to count the VPAT, you have a touchscreen machine, and then there's a roll of paper on the side. And they were buying these new sequoias, and the conservative supervisor, Haggerty, said, okay, for the November 2006 election, you're going to count, he ain't count all the votes on those, uh, on that VPAT. Which he didn't tell us about, didn't expect, but they got that into the resolution to make the purchase, and the registrar said, I don't want to hand count this roll of paper. So he, he just had one machine per precinct and shoved it in a corner. And if you needed uh, to use it because you were disabled or something, you certainly could use it. But everybody else voted on paper ballots. Deborah Bowen got elected that election and eight months later, correct me, Lowell, uh, you were there, but somewhere in there, effectively, they applied that same principle, you're gonna hand count the VPATs and California votes over 90% on paper ballots. Because, in my guess, we set the example here in Alameda County. So that was the first example. But we've had a number of things since then. Um, I won't go through everything we've done, but it's been an active group, and we, the last few years we've been spending our time in Sacramento trying to get Sacramento to, to pass laws and so on. And I'm gonna do one, a quick review of what went on this year, because we do have Californians here uh, in Sacramento with some bills. And then a sort of a background on uh, the, the bill we're gonna be discussing, 480, 840, sorry. Okay. One, we had a bill called uh, Dale, if you can 
grow way down. There should be a, well, forget the ad. Yeah. Uh, this one. Look on that. AB 1403, Internet Voting. This is now the fifth bill in six years that has appeared in the legislature promoting internet voting one way or another, email voting and so on. And this one was really weird because he kept on amending it 10 minutes before committee hearings. And I hadn't seen this done before. We would come in prepared to talk about one thing and it's, oh no, well we changed that. And every committee hearing, he was amending it. The, what happened now is the bill got amended to the point that it really has nothing serious left in it about internet voting. That makes the fifth time in six years that they have tried to get internet voting here in California. The credit mostly, largely, hugely goes to the Secretaries of State Bowen and Padilla for making sure that that doesn't happen. But there were times when the only people who showed up in committee hearings was the Voting Rights Task Force to say no, along with the representative from the Secretary of State. And at other times, we had other groups chime in, verified voting being a significant one. You heard Dr. Jefferson speak yesterday against internet voting. But we've been blocking that for the fifth time in six years. And there were three ballot initiatives a year and a half ago that made it through the Attorney General's office that we're gonna have the people of California vote on them. And boy, that is a category five disaster. That means you drop everything else and block that. And Richard Tam and I went down to the Democratic Convention in San Jose, passed out 1,200 flyers just to alert the party what's coming on. And these initiatives never get, got enough signatures, so they didn't make it on the ballot, but that was a serious crisis. <laughs> They'll be back again again next year, I'm sure. Uh, but what the heck, <laughs> we, we'll be back too. And we hope you'll be listening and watching, especially on the Facebook page, Cal uh, Voting Rights Task Force California, where the announcements go up there about legislation in California and what's going on. That's a good page for you to follow, if, especially if you're in California. Then we had AB 668, which I don't have anything up there, so um, I'll just tell you about it. It was a bill that was proposed by the Secretary of State and the Registrar's Organization, the California Association of Clerks and elect Elections Officials, CACEO. And they wanted to put on the June ballot a bond measure for $450 million to buy new election equipment. And that made it through a bunch of committees and in August, or late September, it stalled, early September, it stalled on the Senate floor. It was put in an inactive file. This was a mixed bag because our election officials do need new equipment. We have some of the oldest equipment in the country. Um, we're gonna hear from John Brakey about keeping ballot images. We, our equipment doesn't do that, it's so old. And so there's some need to, to do that. There's not too happy about giving some of these companies $450 million. But Chris Jordanik of the San Francisco Elections Commission, who was here yesterday, I don't know if he's here today, he likes to talk about agile programming. He got the commission to be extremely agile within a week. And for any city government moving and doing something in a week is just astounding. We got amendments put in that bill to get some of the money into open source development. And that was an achievement, but the bill is now stalled. It's in the inactive file. We don't know what's going to happen. They'll probably try to resuscitate it in January, trying to get it on the, on the ballot in June. Uh, 
And some people are saying, no, it ain't going to make it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll just watch in January and, and let you know what's going on with that. Then we have now more background. Dale, can you scroll down to that menu down there again? The, the menu's always there, just go down. This was a bill that got through last year, and it's a major, major piece of legislation that will affect California. It says that California will do three things. You do any county can opt into 450. You can do all of them or none of them, but you can't pick and choose. You will either, if you do all of them, you're going to send out vote by mail ballots to everybody whether they ask for it or not. They will set up vote centers, which will open 10 days before the election, which is a plus. There will be roughly one vote center where we used to have precincts. The precincts would disappear for a county that opts in. This is a radical change. Anybody in a county will be able to go to any vote center in that county and vote. Third thing is they will have live online registration databases. All the confusion we had in the primary last year about people not being registered or, gee, I'm registered for peace and freedom. I never heard of them. What are you telling me? You'll be able to change that on the spot provided those voter registration databases don't get hacked too much. And that's got me more than a little nervous. But it's all going to come to the same piece, a county opts in or out. You need to set up your county level groups and work with the supervisors and your registrar about whether you opt in or not. Apparently Orange County at the first try has said no. We don't like the vote by mail thing and they're not going to opt in. There's 14 counties that will be able to opt in in 2018, and the whole state opens up in 2020, and Los Angeles County has a huge set of its own rules, which I haven't read through, but it's, of course, Los Angeles is always the exception. Uh, so that's SB 450. That's, that's one part of the background. Then we have, see if you can find 1921. Last year, the legislation read that the, the law said that if you, you can give your ballot to somebody else to take in your vote by mail ballot if you are a member of the household or a member of the family. They struck that. Anybody can bring in your ballot. You can bring in literally a truckload of vote by mail ballots. No questions asked. They're not going to take your ID. They're not going to ask who you are. They're not going to take your license or whatever. You just come in, bring in a truckload of ballots and say, here, count them. This has an effect on 450. Because if you bring those track, track, that truckload of ballots in at 7.59 on election day, if 450 is not vetoed, those ballots will not be audited. But they will not be subject to the audit. 
So this, we're sort of getting a perfect storm of how you can use the vote by mail system, which is already leaky, and, and start to set up what I call uh, automated forgery. We had Jan talk yesterday about just two. 840, not 840. 840, sorry. Talked about there's just two organizations doing vote by mail ballots in Michigan. Well, and we don't know anything about them. We're not a heck of a lot. Guess what? They've got the addresses. They've got your name. They've got your signatures. How? How? Uh, your credit card company has your signatures. Your supermarket probably has your valid copy or your signature. They're all over the place. Equifax had your signatures. Okay? They can get them. If somebody wants to do something really serious, they can get the signatures and print the signature on the envelope. And you deliver a truckload of ballots at 759 and you got somebody who says, okay, and they don't really check the signatures that well. You got a problem. So this is all feeding into the same problem. Okay. Um, then we'll go to 840, which is again down there. Actually, Dale, you, can you see the in the email the thing about from Legend for the first one? That'll get us to the text of the bill, of the law as is. <laughs> Scroll down. All right, there. That's the law as it reads today. And somewhere in there, it's... It's, it's the whole bill, yeah. 15 through 60. That section there, a public manual tally of the ballots including vote by mail ballots cast in 1% of the precincts chosen at random by the election officials shall be, shall be subject to a random audit. That's what it says today. They added some phrases in and that's going to be the second one they inserted here. Um, that yeah, they, they, they inserted there the idea that the ballots, only the ballots that are included in the semifinal official tally will be subject to the 1% manual audit. And that had that phrase, semifinal official tally, uh, had people scrambling, what the heck is that? And I thought I knew and I didn't know, but I, there's some veterans who said, what's this? When they announced the results on election night, you know when they say 100% of precincts reporting? Every ballot that got included in that announcement is in the semifinal official tally. Vote by mail ballots that arrive at 759 generally are not included. Ballots in California, vote by mail ballots can arrive on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They're not included. Provisional ballots are not included in this audit. That's a major change. And it can be, we're talking about four million ballots not included in a random audit. I will stop there.